Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Casey Patrick. I'm the Assistant Medical Director here at MCHD EMS and I'm a practicing emergency physician who would love to be on here talking about something besides COVID-19. This has been heavy and stressful on us healthcare providers beyond belief. But unfortunately, the topic of the week around the country, the topic of the last couple weeks, is the COVID-19 variant, specifically the Delta variant. And what are variants? Variants are just viral mutations that occur naturally as viruses are circulating uh, in the general public. What do viruses do? Viruses infect a host, they replicate within that host, and then try to infect another host. And in that replication phase, mutations or errors in replication can occur. And sometimes if those mutations are beneficial for the virus, i.e. make it more transmissible, transmissible, then they'll stick around and even become more prevalent. And that's really what the Delta variant is. Some folks may have questions about the vaccine's effectiveness in the Delta variant. And we actually had good news uh, from the New England Journal of Medicine on July 21st, so just in the past week, that it appears as though the Pfizer vaccine specifically, after two doses, is has similar effectiveness in the Alpha variant as it does in the Delta variant. The Alpha variant being the main circulating COVID-19 virus type in late uh, mid-2020. So we can hopefully assume that because the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are similar, that they will both have similar effectiveness against the Delta variant. Some of you vaccinated folks out there may be asking, what does it matter? I'm already vaccinated. What more can I do? And really the answer to that question is encourage anyone else that you know that's not vaccinated to get vaccinated. And that's what I would encourage everyone out there listening. Um, as an emergency physician, I've uh, seen lots of COVID over the past month in the emergency department. I have not seen any COVID patients that have been admitted to the hospital, admitted to the ICU, or even presented to the emergency department who are fully vaccinated. If you look at public health data from Alabama, from Louisiana, from Maryland, from Los Angeles, 95 plus percent of COVID deaths have been all unvaccinated patients um, from those locations. And that's data from the state governor's office, from the public health departments. It's data you can go find if you want to look at it that's reputable and replicable and good, solid, believable data. What about masks? CDC today recommended indoor masking again. I will admit fully that our masking messaging has been scattered at times. Part of that is because this is a developing new mutating disease, just like we talked about earlier. And so when the disease prevalence is at three to 4%, like it was through most of May and June here in Montgomery County, Masks probably aren't necessary. Now that we're climbing into the 10, 11, 12% prevalence range of folks being infected, I'm gonna mask again. I, I can't make that recommendation uh, or mandate for you as, as an EMS medical director, but as a practicing emergency physician who's fully vaccinated, when I go into enclosed spaces, with multiple people for extended periods of time, and we know those three things are the biggest risk factors for COVID-19 transmission. Again, enclosed, close proximity with multiple people for prolonged periods because COVID-19 is an airborne uh, virus that's transmitted through airborne particles. When I go into grocery stores, when I go into sporting events, when I go into any enclosed space with, with multiple people, I'm gonna mask again. And when we see, hopefully, if you're listening out there and you're unvaccinated, you're gonna go get vaccinated. Any pharmacy, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, I have no preference, take your pick. They're all vaccinating folks. If we see the COVID-19 numbers decline again, then hopefully we can take the masks off. But when we're up above double digit prevalence in the community, it just makes common sense to have, have masks on. What about, um, what about booster shots or booster vaccines? That's been a, a big topic recently. In Israel, for example, there's been some recommendations for boosters. I, I'm taking this from virologists and immunologists who are smarter than me. 
Booster may not even be the right term. It may just be proper dosing. If you think about the hepatitis virus uh, and the hepatitis B vaccine, for example, that's a three-dose regimen. We found over time that the three-dose regimen was best at prevention. It may end up that a three-dose regimen is best for COVID-19. The CDC and the, the American Infectious Disease Societies and the folks who make those recommendations here in the states have not taken that step yet, but the whole idea will be to optimize our immune response to best prevent the virus. And as the variants continue to develop and continue to mutate, you know, that may become a necessity. It's not at this point, or at least not a recommendation here, but uh, keep your eyes and ears open because you know we, we get booster shots of the tetanus vaccine, for example. If you have a very dirty wound in the emergency department, then your tetanus needs to be updated after five years. If you have a, a relatively clean wound, then your tetanus can stretch for 10 years. So that's, that's something that we do every, on every shift, I update a tetanus shot. So the idea that we may need to optimize the COVID-19 vaccination regimen shouldn't come as a surprise. The fact that there are variants shouldn't come as a surprise. There, there, I mean, the flu virus, for example, is another RNA virus like COVID-19, and it varies so much that we have to change the contents of the flu vaccine every year based on the variations that occur. So these concepts in other viruses and in other vaccines and throughout, you know, virology are, are very common. And in the end, what do we all want, regardless of any opinions, any uh, thoughts, uh, any, uh, you know, what, no matter where you come from across America, one thing we can all agree on is that we want the pandemic to be over. That's what, that's what I want. That's what everyone wants. I want to go back to uh, traveling and vacations and indoor activities and all the things that we took for granted that we could do back in 2018 that, that, that are a struggle now. And the best way to do that, number one, two, three, four, and five on the list, is if you're not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. If you look at death, death rates of vaccinated folks, as of July 12th, we vaccinated over 160 million people fully vaccinated in America. And the death rate in that group, I can't even do the decimals that goes out so far, I don't even know how to describe it. I think if I did, I would stutter. 0.007%. So out of 160 million vaccinated fully patients, we had just over 1,000 deaths in that group. That's astoundingly effective and astoundingly safe. Um, hopefully, very, very soon, the FDA will issue full approval for the Pfizer vaccine, their application is in and complete. So hopefully we hear about that very soon. So mask, that's gonna be a personal choice. Um, all I can tell you is what my choice is as a, as a medical professional, as someone who's fully vaccinated, as someone whose family is fully vaccinated, when I'm in public enclosed spaces with multiple folks, I am gonna remask again until the prevalence in the community drops. So thanks for listening. If you have questions or concerns, please let us know. Our community's health, your health is what, you know, what drives us and why we do what we do every day. Um, we're happy to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching.